Hello and welcome to ALW Research Team. This is episode 2 of the Hull and Barnsley series. For episode 1, see the link in the description box. A rival railway company to the then well-established Hull to Selby Railway. With its own goods terminus and dock facilities, the Hull and Barnsley Railway opened on the 20th of July, 1885. Initially struggling to get passenger numbers, freight served the railway with coal exports from Yorkshire's deep mines. Pits were expanding underground. They required timber and pit props, which were imported to the Alexander Dock and transported back to the mines in the empty coal trucks. Also, wool imports to the clothing and carpet mills made the new railway busy and prosperous. Passenger numbers eventually increased, so much so that the Cannon Street goods terminus was expanded with facilities for members of the public to alight. We're going to continue where we left off in episode 1 at Beverly Road, moving on to Maple Street. Let's go! On all HJS. Yeah, full junction. Full junction. Ten. So this is the other end of Degray Street. Yeah, it's just a five minute walk. The old Mayfair cinema there. Mayfair picture house. The reason I'm taking to this spot is because it fascinates me. The building looks as if it was probably used as an old Barnsley building. And the alleyway in question is still the original one from when the railway was built, I believe. So this is one of the Hull and Barnsley alleyways. We're near one of the allegedly most haunted houses in Hull now. So this is still in use, isn't it? Yeah, that's the Hull Docks branch still. There must yep. be in excess of 36 bridges in Hull for the Hull and Barnsley Railway Line stroke Docks branch. Wow. The reason I brought you down here is because of that building there. That does look quite sinister. Not just sinister, but I believe it had something to do with the railway. Yeah, it's got the sort of loading bays on it. Yeah. And the wooden oak beams acting as lintels. Looks very old indeed. Unless we see some old pictures. Maple Street in Hull. It's a brilliant shot and we've got a returning wall again there. Edging the embankment because this was an elevated railway. Most of it was elevated, wasn't it? In Hull area it was. Yeah, all the way to Little Wheaton and it started going under. Yes. One of the deepest, I think it was 83. The Little Wheaton cutting was 83 feet deep. The cutting now is completely filled in at Little Wheaton. And I mean, like um, the railway back in the day, there'd be no fencing like that. It's just, no. just walls like this. It was only Network Rail that got excited about Palisade. They put Palisade everywhere. But before then, it was just. Well, he didn't go on it because it was a railway and he got run over. Back to the car then. Yeah. So we're just on Neptune Street in Hull now. And just here, recently rediscovered during some demolition works, that is a railway arch just in there. And this was part of the Hull and Barnsley Neptune Street Goods Railway Station. We're going to have a look round the back now, uh, but we're, you can see here the similar similar bricks that we saw on Cannon Street. Can you see those? Similar brick construction and the feathering bricks up here. We're going to have a look round there on the drone with the drone. But this was a goods railway station recently uh, rediscovered when. The was 
going to have a look around the corner, see if we can see um, some of the architecture that was part of this superb railway station. This was part of it as well, but this has had a modern face you put on it. But there's still signs of yesteryear. It's now a security group. Um, quite ironic, really. We think these buildings had something to do with it as well. Along here. Uh, these, this looks very old. Um, we think these were window cells. And this was a large building that's been demolished. Just to all up around here. If it isn't too overgrown, if not, I'll just go to the drone footage. Look around here, you'll start to see. This entire yard was used for exporting coal by the Hull and Barnsley Railway. After closure, a local scrap merchant used this area to cut up steam locomotives from all over the nation until the 1970s, when these buildings were converted into cold storage. Neptune Street, Hull and Barnsley Goods Railway Station, recently rediscovered. You can see the large arches where the railway engines pass through. That was only recently rediscovered when a coal store was demolished and someone looked it up and it was in one of the local newspapers that we heard about it. So come to have a look ourselves. So this is uh, Albert and William Wright docks up ahead and these were the old dock area buildings. Right, so we're in Anlaby now, and we're on the site of what used to be Springhead Railway Sidings. Behind me, just in there, there used to be Springhead Halt, which was a small railway halt, just, just in there. Then there was a little bridge here. I'll try and put an old photograph of the halt up. And up here was the railway sidings. Now, I believe this big lump here that we're on, this was the embankment that was dug out and dumped here. Now, all this material here was dug out from that side when they built Summer Bridge doors. So they dug it away and dumped it here. That's why there's this big lump of ground. Dave, I bet this was the embankment. This was the, the embankment. embankment. And they've dug it out from over there and put it dump, over here. dumped it here, out the way. Yeah, to get rid of it. Get rid of it. And I think that part that they've left, looking at how it's shaped at the top, I think that's actually brick or stone. I think that would have been part of the, the, the railway a tunnel bridge. or the bridge. Yeah, there, there was a bridge over this road. And because that was solid, it was too hard to demolish. They just couldn't yeah. be bothered and left it. Yeah. Springhead Halt was just there. And that halt was for the workers for that old water pumping station there. It was also a goods halt for unloading goods. And then the railway carried on that way towards Ripplingham. There was a five arch viaduct at Ripplingham and that was beyond the Willoughby and Caracalla station.
So that way is back to Hull. Can you see there's some little vertical vertical posts over there? That is that is the dock where we were earlier. Now that dock was the start of the Hull and Barnsley Railway. This is the old railway trap bed. Embankment. Yeah, you can see how the embankment drops off there. Uh, this would have been it. The old trap bed. It's sadly just a footpath in the bushes now. There's some some bricks, railway uh, infrastructure. Very little to make out, to be honest. What was once the railway? There's no uh, signs of any telegraph poles or anything for signalling, cables, so like that's all gone. Curves a little bit there. So, I mean, the railway itself wouldn't have curved that sharply. No, I think from the track there to here. Was more here. Yeah. So we're in Willoughby now. Uh, Willoughby Square is that way. Um, Willoughby and Caracalla Station used to be just the other side of the road here, and this area was embankment, and there was a there was a road bridge just at the end of the way, can just at the end of there. There's a road, and there was a road bridge over that. The railway station was just where those buildings are over there. This public footpath still remains, and we're going to go up this up here. So this is a public area. I'm going to go up here and have a look what's left. So this was the track bed of the Hull and Barnsley Railway. In front of us that way, that is Hull. Um, the next station stop along this way was Springhead Halt and Springhead Sidings. I believe if we walk far enough we end up, uh, there is a railway bridge up here so we'll go along and see if we can find it it feels like the embankment's actually getting taller and narrower it is a bit of an inclined bit feel of it yeah yeah I feel like we're going uphill yeah doesn't look wide here. enough does it no there is a metal post here just there was that a do not trespass on the railway post? If you know what that is, please leave a comment. That's it. Here's an old, uh, like a survey marker. If anybody knows what that is, please leave a comment. It says OSCP, I believe it says. Now we've got the old Hull and Barnsley architecture here. This railing, steel railing over this walkway. Dave's down at the bottom there. Let's make our way down to him. Down to him. And that's the bridge that goes under the embankment. That is one of the playing fields in Anleby. And this is a quaint little footway underneath the railway. So the railway embankment above, that way to Springhead Halt, that way to Willoughby and Kerkella. Underneath here we can see the brick arches. Is it, it is in good condition. There is a bit of surface erosion but I think that's been done mechanically someone's hit that this has been slightly weathered uh, we can see some more vandalism here or well, someone's been chipping away at it for some reason I've really no idea why you'd do that the magnificent arch built to support the railway above there's been a bit of damage here where something's hit it we can also see, interestingly here, D 
this par has been rendered in the past, it's had a render applied to it to protect the bricks. All the renders come away all the time, and you can even see where the render's been painted. I've never seen that before on a railway bridge where they've rendered it. If there's any render on here. No render, but this has been painted green. It was rendered, look. Yeah, it's re yeah, it has been rendered. I've never seen rendering on brickwork like that. So there we are, and then that's just a footpath going that way to residential properties and the magnificent bridge supporting the Hull and Barnsley Railway. Right, so we're going to go back up onto the railway embankment and make our way back to the car. I'm going to take you to a site where there used to be five arches over Westfield Road. Sadly, it was demolished in the 1970s, but we're going to take you to the site anyway and just show you what used to be there. Cool. We've left the train station car park and we've we're now on the road. Now this road, the railway embankment, is just to your left there. That was where Willoughby and Kaikala station was. Now, as we're driving along this road, this road readopted where the railway line ran, which was along here. And when we, when the road stops climbing, that is when the railway then verged off to the left again, just about here. The railway railway embankment started to go off to the left um, and in a moment we'll see a roundabout and a Lidl's, a little supermarket and the railway ran through the Lidl down here. This new housing estate has re-landscaped that area but you did used to be able to make out where the embankment was uh, but it is all now gone. So this road wasn't here back in the days of the railway there was simply this road didn't exist this was installed afterwards so to our left there that is the old Great Gutter Lane there was a railway bridge over that and then the embankment carried on through can you see over there that was the start of the uh, what or what is left of the railway embankment the it went to the left of this pub here and then if you can see some brick buildings just up there that's where the railway went off there look see that that was the railway went off that way to uh, Ripplingham Road which we are now going to I'm going to show you where Revire used to be I believe it on I believe the road is actually called Westfield Road the railway now um, Willoughby and Kerkala station is to 90 degrees to our right and 90 degrees to our left um, was Little Wheaton or the track going off towards Little Wheaton as you'll be able to see from the camera uh, now is how hilly this area is now this is why the railway was elevated so it gave it a flat plane to run on because as many of you will know Railways and hills aren't a good combination. Now what we're going to try and do is pull over somewhere because the actual existence of the railway line is just to our left and right. So we're just going to pull up here. This is where the five arch viaduct was situated. So we're just on Westfield Road now, uh, between Cottingham and South Cave. Now these here, this is all flood defences that were installed after the recent floods. Now they've even called these Railway, Railway North Lagoon and Railway South Lagoon. So they're still referring to the railway that was here. And just here, there used to be a five arch viaduct, which is now demolished. I believe it was demolished in the 1970s. Now, a long time ago, you could drive along the old railway embankment, but it's all sealed off now. And I think it's used as a works of some kind.
and that is up there. And that was the railway embankment. This is a steep embankment. Go across diagonally, it shouldn't be as steep that way. If we can get up, that is. My legs aren't what they used to be. Oh, there's a old railway sleeper look. Yeah, looking a bit worse for wear. A bit rotten. It's alright climbing up this banking, but we saw so brambly at the top and I can't get onto embankment itself. It'll be a bit of a waste. We're getting there. Uh, sadly, the foliage is looking a bit thick. Wow. No, them brambles are impassable. You fool! There's that railway sleeper again. This is the embankment and cuttings from Kerkeller up to Ripplingham Road. The rail over road bridge is still there, intact, which will be the start point of our next episode. Please subscribe and share. Thank you for watching this ALW research team video. Part 3 of this video series will be out next Thursday at 4pm UK time. Shoulder. I look back at your door In my head it goes over and over Should I leave?